At precisely 4 a.m. Universal Time on October 3rd, the vast emptiness above Mars stirred with an unseen force, a whisper from the void that no one could have anticipated. What began as a routine flyby, an interstellar wanderer slipping silently through our solar system on an unyielding path from the uncharted depths beyond, twisted into a revelation that left even the sharpest minds at NASA and ESA grasping in the shadows of uncertainty. This enigmatic visitor, known only as Three-Eye Atlas, glided past the red planet at a tantalizing distance of just 29 million kilometers, close enough to tease, yet far enough to hide its secrets in the cosmic dark. Every lens humanity had hurled into space, every unblinking eye on orbiters and probes, swiveled toward it, hungry for a glimpse. But in that frozen instant, as the data streams flickered to life, something unfathomable unfolded a ripple that would shatter our fragile illusions about comets, about the endless black and, above all, about the chilling possibility that solitude in the universe might be nothing more than a comforting lie we've told ourselves. For in a moment that history would etch in trembling ink, Mars did not merely observe the intruder from the stars. It reached out. It replied. And if tales of celestial enigmas like this one pull you deeper into the unknown, Consider subscribing to stay locked into every shadowy discovery we uncover together, with notifications on so you never miss the next pulse from the cosmos. The intrusion started with a subtlety that masked its menace, a faint emerald shimmer blooming against the inky backdrop of space, like a secret eye opening in the night. For those fleeting heartbeats, the influx from the Vigilant Sentinels, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, Mars Express, Maven and the Trace Gas Orbiter, whispered of normalcy, Readings as predictable as the orbit of a lifeless rock, yet beneath that veil of routine, a tremor built, unseen but insistent, as if the comet harbored a hidden breath waiting to exhale. Then without mercy the glow ignited, not in a slow creep but in a savage surge, exploding outward like a forbidden signal unleashed from the core. Instruments clawed at the data, spectrometers gasping as they traced jets of gas that defied every law etched in textbooks, not the ghostly vapours of water ice, but razor-sharp ejections of cyanogen and carbon dioxide, chemicals that should have slumbered eternally in the frigid tomb of interstellar cold. The surface of three Pi Atlas fevered unnaturally, its hazy envelope swelling like a lung drawing in the planet's gaze, while the energy it vomited forth eclipsed all forecasts, climbing into realms where physics faltered and whispered doubts. Experts huddled in dim-lit rooms, Fingers flying over consoles to tame the wild numbers, but each recalibration only deepened the riddle. This was no inert chunk of frozen relic tumbling blindly through the void. This was something alive to the scrutiny, something that twisted under the weight of being seen, as if it savoured the attention or feared it. And then amid the escalating frenzy, the auroras bloomed, impossible harbingers that clawed at the edges of reason, Mars, with its whisper-thin veil of air and shattered magnetic remnants, had long scorned such displays, its nights as barren as forgotten dreams. But on this forsaken eve, ultraviolet eyes pierced the gloom to reveal waves of light unfurling across the entire shadowed hemisphere, silken threads of violet, emerald and blood-red weaving in a hypnotic frenzy that mocked the stars themselves. No solar gale had raged to birth this spectacle. The sun slumbered undisturbed. The sole culprit lingered in the heavens. Three-Eye Atlas, its presence a silent command that coaxed the planet's fragile gases into rebellion. For endless hours, the upper reaches of Mars throbbed and quivered in eerie unison with the comet's arc, a spectral waltz-binding, dust-choked world to wandering phantom. Each pulse a question unanswered, each flicker a promise veiled. Down on the rust-scarred plains, Perseverance's cameras snatched glimpses of horizon sparks, ethereal jabs that lit the craters like distant memories stirring. Curiosity's detectors, ever vigilant against the lethal rain of space, caught whispers of charged flecks dancing in defiance of logic. Even in sight, that dust-veiled sentinel long lapsed into silence felt the stir. A low electromagnetic murmur seeping through the regolith, vibrating the bones of the world as if awakening from eons of hush. The evidence mounted, unyielding and cold, Mars was not passive in this encounter. It was echoing back, its voice a fragile song rising from silence, but to what listener? From the comet's alien heart or from chasms buried deep within its own scarred crust? The red world, once a tomb of quiet desolation, now hummed with secrets it had guarded since the birth of time. 
Just as the auroras crested in their frantic glory, a fracture appeared, subtle at first, then insistent, as if the comet's facade could bear the strain no longer. High above, the orbiting watchers captured the birth of shards, glimmering slivers peeling from the luminous heart of Three-Eye Atlas, spiraling into the abyss like shards of a shattered mirror, reflecting forbidden truths. Yet these were no chaotic scatterings lost to entropy's whim. They carved elegant, symmetric whirls, tugged by threads invisible to mortal sight, each twist a deliberate stroke in an unfinished canvas, dubbed spiral shedding by those who dared name the unnatural. The motion hummed with precision that mocked the randomness of nature, every fragment pivoting in concert, as though a singular will bound them in obedience. Whispers among the observers grew bolder. Were these pieces reorienting, attuning themselves to the faint magnetic scars of Mars before slipping away, like scouts mapping a territory long concealed? Then, as if scripted by some cosmic playwright, the trace gas orbiter seized upon a surge, methane, that elusive spectre, which had tantalized and evaded Martian seekers for decades, erupting in a spike as sharp as a blade. The instant aligned flawlessly with the comet's zenith passage, overhead like a watchful sentinel. Doubt dissolved into dread. Influence was no longer a hypothesis, but a haunt. Had three by Atlas seeded the air with otherworldly essences, stirring the atmosphere to unnatural fervor? Or had it kindled a slumbering giant beneath the dunes, an ancient brew fermenting in the planet's hidden veins, roused by a call from the stars that echoed across light years? From the heart of this unraveling, a sound emerged, faint, methodical, and utterly alien, a rhythmic thrum that pulsed every 22 seconds, burrowing into the data like a coded confession. NASA's technicians waved it off at first, attributing the intrusion to the ghosts of electronic chatter. But when ESA's Mars Express, perched at a wholly divergent perch, echoed the identical cadence, certainty crumbled like dry regolith. Two distant machines, two isolated vantage points, one unrelenting beat, undeniable, inescapable. The resonance lingered for nearly an hour, hovering just shy of the ear's grasp, a subsonic specter that would evade the casual listener as mere hiss. To the initiated, however, it loomed as an aberration carved from impossibility, a defiance of chance that clawed at the foundations of explanation. Public decrees from the agencies leaned on plasma resonance, that tidy veil for the ion dance between crust and tail, a natural tryst in the charged ballet of space. But in the shadowed corridors of control centers, murmurs slithered like smoke. Was this recoil from our own probing waves? The electromagnetic nets we'd cast to ensnare the comet's secrets, rebounding in mockery. Or a lure, a deliberate ping cast into the ether, awaiting an answer from the void. Whatever guise it wore, randomness was a lie it never pretended to. The hum vanished as suddenly as it had intruded, plunging Mars back into its primordial hush, but the air thickened with residue. An exchange had transpired tangible as a scar, quantifiable as a shadow, perhaps even willed, a bridge forged in the dark between wanderer and world, leaving echoes that no instrument could fully silence. As the first tentative light of Martian dawn clawed over the jagged horizon, the planet emerged altered, its nocturnal veil of green luminescence dissolving into memory. Yet the scars lingered in the silent testimony of the groundbound watchers. Perseverance's logs brimmed with atmospheric oddities, traces of alchemical brews unfit for natural genesis, carbon isotopes skewed in ratios that taunted geological law, moats aligned to magnetic whims that scorned the local stone, ambient radiation, that constant specter of cosmic spite, plunged inexplicably, as if an unseen thirst had drained it through the night, leaving the air unnaturally pure. The methane frenzy had ebbed, retreating into the dunes like a thief in retreat. But in its wake slithered something more insidious, a web of micro-discharges rising from the soil itself, faint electrical filigrees stitching across the vast plains in patterns too intricate for accident. To the analysts poring over the feeds, it evoked circuitry etched by an absent hand, natural contours yielding to an imposed pulse, residual plasmas. They murmured in official tones, but the undercurrent hissed of ignition, of circuits long dormant flickering to life, Mars seemed to recollect, dredging fragments from abyssal forgetfulness, its crust humming with a vitality suppressed since the solar winds first scoured its youth. Whatever Three-Eye Atlas had whispered in passing, it had not departed empty-handed. 
It had left the red world thrumming, a faint echo of existence rekindled after billions of years in the cold grip of isolation, as if the planet itself now harbored a secret rhythm, waiting for the next intruder to awaken it fully.